So in a previous video of mine, we tried to get away from frameworks and do some stuff in vanilla JavaScript. Now, unfortunately, I started with the most complicated thing I find is pretty much nested routing. So what we're going to do is we're going to step back a little bit and do things in a more simple way. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the old code and we're just going to have some component loader and an index HTML. Now I will be using Tailwind to simplify the CSS, but we have here some of the new nested styling that which also makes the app more easy to view. So this is the app. It's basically a timer here, and then we have another component here with plus and minus. So what we do, if we just go to the code and step through it, we'll put a breakpoint into the component loader file. We're just going to put it here, and we're going to step through the code. So in terms of the page setup, what we do is we have this, anything with a data component will be loaded into the memory, and then we'll call the default module within that component. So if we look at the component of Holo World Timer, what it does is it returns a module which adds the current date to this host component, which is the div here, and then every second it increments it. The other one, it adds a couple of buttons to the host component, adds some listeners, and then it displays the count, as you've seen before. So let's just step through the code here a little bit, refresh the page. We can see that the page has the two empty divs, one div here, and uh, so this is the, the flex box containing them both. So we have the first one, which is the Hello World timer, and the second one, which is the number changer. So we're gonna get all the components. Let's just take you through the code here. Get all components is just a basic vanilla Query selector all. That will give us an array. So we can see here if we hover over this, we have these two components this one and this one. And then we're going to do this call to the import components, which is going to just use native feature of downloading the component, almost like you'd call in React or solid lazy loading. What it does is it creates a map and it creates a bunch of promises which will execute them all. And it will use the actual name of the component. If we just step here, so the name will be the name inside of the data component. And we have the one convention here in this methodology is that the component name uh, is actually going to be the file path. So we're going to go to components, component name, hello world timer.js, which is found here. And then once we then um, download it successfully, you'll go to the network tab and you can see that it's downloaded the, first of all, the component loader. And then once this oh, there's the await statement, you will see the um, actually because it's a promise, so it gets go back to the start there. So we go to the network, we can see that it's loaded these other components, and um, we're basically uh, setting it to this hash map here like that. So I'm going to get the code, the, the, the actual module that the, the code inside of the default, which is this, and then we are going to then execute the import. Um, Return this bunch of components, which will then will, and they will then run them. Okay, so then we get this list of components, which we have this this name here, and then we have the uh, sorry comp component registry. We have our entries, which is the the map of the name of the component, and then we can uh, instantiate each one of these each time we see the component in the DOM. We'll we'll, we'll get back to this again. I'm just going to throw in a, quite a lot of you here, but. That's in a sense what we're doing. So in terms of the actual executing the module, we then, uh, we've got a list of components and then we then want to get from the registry. So we get the name of the component and then we go to the registry, which is the map. And then we have this module that we just check to see if it's a function and then we execute the module. So in the first case, it would be this one here, the host component, as you can see the host component is the element there. And then we just, set the, the current time once this module is executed. And then we'll just start adding more complications because obviously this is a very simple vanilla app, but as you can see there's no even there's not even a build step here. Um, everything is in a sense contained within just this. The most complicated thing is just loading the stuff in here. But this is a in a sense the most framework part of this thing here. Once the module comes in, they can be anything they want. It's sort of a bit like a web component in a sense, but even simpler. Um, they just, you just execute this code. So we'll, we'll try and get on to other things where we have commun components uh, communicating with each other and then some sort of global states. 
if that's the route we are going. So um, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment if you like this video. Uh, I noticed some of you were quite, uh, you quite liked the last video I did there. I got some interesting comments. <laughs> um, I am subscribed by 100. I think I saw another one where the guy was very happy, like no more, um, he doesn't like React very much. I hope this up. Good job, React can die screaming in the fire, which is, I guess, a bit dramatic, but uh, I will try and keep up for THC Denton and also Smart Creator. Thanks for watching, friends. Bye-bye.